La production agricole dépend agricultural production depends on the use of biodiversity on cultivated plants and around cultivated plots because on cultivated plots people sow seeds for the vegetation but there are also species coming from the outside pollinator insects or pests, birds, uh, mammals, uh, wild boars. In agricultural production, therefore, we must take into consideration the whole diversity on the plot and around the plot. Just to summarize the diversity uh, present for agriculture, we can divide it in several compartments, although they are organized in a system. There is air biodiversity above ground and telluric biodiversity, everything in the ground. Then, depending on the various kingdoms, there is a plant biodiversity, which has been planted, sown by man, with an air biomass volume and a root biomass volume. And within the uh, planted, cultivated population, there is uh, biodiversity divided in animal or bacterial biodiversity, above ground and in the ground. Now, if we analyze the pr production process and if we uh, take into consideration the uh, services provided by uh, biodiversity to agricultural production, there is the part which we concentrate on for agriculture, the destructive biodiversity, the productive biodiversity, then the resource biodiversity, but also destructive biodiversity, pests, attackers, and uh, this is a negative kind of biodiversity because it decreases yield. Agriculture, modern agriculture, has focused on productive biodiversity, especially on cultivated species from the productive biodiversity. As we have seen, agriculture has domesticated species in order to improve the yield in the cultivated uh, land. But in, during the last 100 years, we have acquired better knowledge and understanding of uh, biology and the way living beings function, and therefore agriculture has used this knowledge to improve species in the form of elite varieties drawn from the cultivated biodiversity, what we nowadays call genetic resources. This was done in several different ways, but roughly for each species, the pattern is more or less the same. Agriculture tried to identify, characterize biodiversity, genetic biodiversity of a given species, be it uh, a cultivated species or a uh, similar wild species, a relative, linked with the uh, domestication process, and the varietal improvement task was to identify favorable characteristics, combine them, to come up with new variability and varieties that are better suited to a given type of context, especially in contexts uh, with no limiting factors. Now, the huge progress made by biology has also allowed uh, the science uh, which uh, endeavors to improve uh, cultivated plants to move forward. Nowadays, we no longer talk about phenotypes alone. We don't work on phenotypes alone, performances based on the offspring, the uh, crossbreeding between uh, selected individuals, but also on the uh, intimate mechanisms the intimate life of the individuals on the cellular level, physiological processes. This has led to new sciences such as uh, proteomics or metabolomics, whereby we can check that what we select is going to provide better performances at a very, very refined level for the individual. Now, based on the species and the flora biology, Varietal improvement will not follow the same pattern. Floral biology between plants that have a sexed reproduction or a vegetative reproduction fashion, geneticists are not going to work exactly the same way in order to use the uh, genetic uh, existing resources to create a new elite variety. There are also plants that are allogamous or autogamous 
florale des and floral biology of cultivated species pour chaque espèce finalement imposes a given pattern for each species, selection methods uh, and tools that are well suited to that particular species. Another factor that influences the way we select species is the access to genetic resources and natural variability for main species such as rice or maize. The diversity has been collected. There are ex situ collections of uh, seeds and saplings uh, kept in uh, fridges so that we have permanent access to the genetic resource. For rice, there are about 100,000 species of rice kept in a fridge. For maize, about 20,000. So the main veg plant species that we work on, and this is also true for animal species, we have collections of genetic resources uh, kept in a fridge uh, and uh, usable to improve uh, genetic uh, characteristics. The progress made by biological sciences has also allowed to uh, genetic engineering to move forward. Nowadays, we have systems uh, which uh, allow us to perform marker-assisted uh, genetic selection. Rather than uh, analyzing the improvement on the field, we can analyze the improvement by mar with markers which uh, detect the presence of a given gene or a given molecular characteristic. We call them QTM. Thanks to the progress made by, therefore, by biology, but also physiology, genetic improvement patterns are highly performing today and we are reaching the, the ultimate step because we no longer need to see the phenotype of an individual to select the individual. We don't select an individual based on its phenotypic value and the offspring, but the presence or absence of a given type of interest, of gene which might be interesting. The research to improve species has focused on the main emblematic species. There are big species uh, which attract most of the investment, wheat, maize, rice, soya bean. For these species we have elite varieties which are well suited to non-limiting growing conditions and where we have the best performances. Now, some species are not submitted to genetic work. They are called orphan species. They are very important for some farmers in poor countries and they are involved in varietal improvement. Millet or plantain banana, banana, which is uh, a staple diet for people living in developing countries. One needs to understand when talking about concentration of uh, cultivated biodiversity when it is productive is that we are favoring a given compartment of biodiversity. We make it preponderant, dominant, versus the other compartments of biodiversity. And this obviously has consequences in the way the performances are expressed. Limiting factors need to be compensated for by uh, with inputs such as water, irrigation or fertilizers. And on the other hand, we need to uh, eradicate anything that might disturb the performances of the elite species. Another important aspect, the investment needed to work on these species are growing and for the last few decades only the big international companies have the capacity to invest to create new elite varieties which are then sold to the farmers. Seeds for elite varieties represent now a big expense for farmers, sometimes in excess of 10% of the final cost of uh, cultivation, because this retributes the research effort made by international companies. However, it raises a problem, a society debate in other areas than agriculture. The fact that some people have uh, gained ownership over living organisms. These um, international companies invested so much that they wanted to have a return on their investment, which means that farmers have a limited access to uh, this uh, vari the variety of species. And sometimes even the farmers are forbidden from growing uh, plants with the previous biodiversity uh, that they had. It means that people have uh, ownership of living organisms and also that the resources have been 
absorbed by the non-agricultural sector, which means that it's handicapped for farmers and growers. And it raises a question. What about the maintenance of the large collection of uh, cultivated species? Ex C2 collections, such as the one kept in fridges, are static, frozen, if I may say so. And there is no evolution. Therefore, we are in danger of seeing a dynamic loss of these collections, and inevitably, which means that nowadays producers are going back to in situ collection preservation, biodiversity in the wide sense of meaning of the, the word, and uh, farmers have direct access to the useful genetic uh, wealth.